Hello YouTube people. I hope you're well. Things are getting good. Okay, so I have some things to divulge to you all. <laughs> Sound like a Dalek. Um I've been meditating and I used to call it work. Now I call it play. Because <laughs> when you're feeling your soul, you should play. Play to learn. Now I don't know if I've already said that. No, I haven't. That's not I've said it to people. Maybe some comments. But I haven't made a video since uh, the end of March. So what have we missed? Uh, got up to there. Right. So why didn't quite get round to saying is that um, basically everything earthly is a sin okay. so obviously there are sins on different levels murder clearly is a bigger sin than <laughs> talking but still for the soul it's kind of anti-soul if you like anything that isn't the soul then is not eternal da 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 so um, so what I've been saying you know explain, to explain it is like um, you know when you die your body dies you know, what are you going to remember about your life? You're not going to remember everything you ate, are you? But you will remember taste. Sweet taste, right? Well, that's there for you. In the, in the soul. So, every pleasure on earth, every earthly pleasure that you think you'd miss, there is a, a soul equivalent. Although the soul equivalent is way more better. Right. So in a sense, you know, it's kind of how we're being taught on earth through pleasures and unpleasant things. You know, there's an equivalent in the soul. So true with unpleasant things. But nobody chooses <laughs> directly, wants uh, displeasure. Um, but as part of the learning course, you have to feel everything your soul can feel to understand it. So, you know, pushing away those unpleasant things, if you've never felt them, is wrong. You've got to just feel it, to understand it, to, to know how to avoid making more of them by knowing what causes them. <laughs> You with me? Hopefully. So all's gonna be good. All is gonna be awesome. We have to go through this little stage of learning. Um <clears throat> so all things earthly are sin. But pleasures have a soul equivalent, superior and good. Sweet taste and comfort from food, so you know, other food too, to make feel comfort. Available in abundance from God. And I felt that mother's expression is that mother seems to be the comforter in your belly. And the, the sweet love we feel from beneath. Okay? Um, music pleasures. You know, how music can... And this really triggered something for me today so it's really good and I was just sitting there didn't have a clue what to think about and I was like you know come on God please teach me show me and just have to sort of yeah rely on that and it came the the music thing uh, well, what came was like the vibrations in the soul so that's the equivalent to hearing music 
you know, when you hear music, lots of different types of music, aren't there? And they do give you different feelings, and depending on how sensitive you are to your feelings. But, so, say Bob Marley's music, you know, singing Redemption Song or whatever, or Trench Town Rock, you know, it's going to give you this sort of, this feeling. And um, others, different feelings, so many different types of music, so many different types of feelings there, and equivalent also with the soul, remember the soul's superior, much, much better, so there's, a, you know, there's going to be a lot to play with there. Um, so, yeah, so music of the soul, so the soul can listen to music, if you like, the soul can feel vibrations, uh, you know, of all different type feelings, and the soul can also make music, so... So then this triggered that, singing a new song. So singing with my soul. <clears throat> Behind a thought there is a feeling. Now it has to be a sincere thought. And, you know, spoken. So you're not singing the thought. You're saying a statement, say. Um, God is here that statement itself, it's said sincerely, and I do feel that sincerely because, you know, I'm feeling God right now. So, saying God is here is sincere, and it, and then I can feel the, the resonance, if you like, that, 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 that my soul expresses that, and that's my soul singing. <laughs> and as my soul sings, you know, and maybe sing it loud for uh, many to hear. We'll have to wait and see about that. Um, touch, you know, touch is probably the most similar thing to what it feels like when you're feeling your soul. You know, it's like your soul is being touched in different ways with. Yeah, so sort of all sorts of different ways, but again, touch is, you know, uh, quite similar, but so there's a soul equivalence of touch. And maybe the music thing, maybe that's Father God? I don't know. This is just thinking of maybe touch is both, both of them. And God is, you know, one, of course. Uh, I just want to say, you know, about all earthly things being a uh, sin to the soul. Well, one thing that won't change is your interactions with people. Well, it will change. You won't be talking and slapping each other. <laughs> but feeling, feeling each other. So the people you can feel. And I think pretty much anyone, if they want to, if you want to really sort of just tap in and you're not too sure what I mean by feeling, imagine two people very very close to you, say a parent, maybe a child or a sibling um, or maybe a partner so that so that you can make some differential now imagine that person walks into the room where you are now there's a feeling then imagine a, that a different person comes in right? there's a different feeling so they can begin to differentiate between the different feelings. And of course God God has feeling, a specific feeling as God and God is blooming mighty. So you know <laughs> God is mighty. There's another one you can say. And well this or I can. Or anyone can, right? You know, this is something I'm gonna be playing with is just, you know, saying different things and seeing the feeling and then understanding it more by that way and then just, you know, maybe it's useful. So God is mighty, you know, and, and there's a feeling. So we could all sing um, 
together, couldn't we? We could all say, sort of like, please God, come and come and bring your kingdom. <laughs> Let God's kingdom come. And but the other thing is, obviously, you know, I could say, God, come. God is here. Somebody else could say it, but their interpretation of God could be completely different. They might hate God. So you've got to, you know, words are powerful. And it, this is, I always never really understood when, in right at the beginning of the Bible, like, I was like, I am the word. And suddenly that's starting to um, lead me on somewhere with this, how this sort of words, thoughts that you just kind of say in your head affect your soul. Amazing. Powerful. Gives you the the choice then, doesn't it? It's sort of quite clear then. You, you know everything you say in your head is going to create a feeling. Well, you know, you can catch yourself slipping up when you're thinking negatively. Thinking, you know, do, do I really want to get my soul to be singing this song? I'm thinking negatively. Don't nobody wants that, do they? So, <clears throat> so yeah. I think that's uh, all I really need to say on the matter. Um, I've spoken. Yeah, I didn't mention, so what I've been finding lately over the last month or so is um, feelings that prevent me from feeling my soul. And so, you know, it becomes uncomfortable. I don't want to be sitting here suddenly, you know, I find myself wanting to get up and just stop and stuff like that. But then checking myself and thinking, well, what's the feeling? You know, I'm getting a feeling that's making me want to stop, right? So what's that feeling? And there have been these four, like hopelessness, the dependence um, on, on not God, on other things, um, the anticipation, so what are called excited or dread, you know, any sort of anticipation of what's going to happen um, is another big one, and a, a sort of a desperation or a sort of a, a, a trying to force things to happen, you know. Like you've, you've done everything, you, you've got peace and quiet, you're in the right situation, you've got all you need, you know, now make it happen, and it doesn't work. It won't happen in that sort of thing. So you sort of, you know, you feel that desperation, you realise you just have to allow calm. God is always calm. So like four things. And, and you know, this thing of the, the, the cross and everything, and four points and there's four legs on a chair, it's sturdy, you know, so they're like the bad ones that you need to know about because you need to be aware of them because otherwise you'd just be thinking, I'm just feeling terrible and I don't know why and I want to stop. But as soon as you sort of say hopelessness, yes, there's this hopelessness, you can, and then you can feel it and you just allow, yeah, yeah you have to feel that you've got this hopelessness in you, you just have to accept it. And then and then there just comes this pleasure and this beautiful feeling like from God, you know, feeling with God, you've got feeling with God. <laughs> and and then you and you're feeling fine again. And you know, it, it's still happening, so I still get them. And the dependence one, well I'm probably causing each time I have a fag and stuff, I'm probably causing a bit more of that. I have to feel that you know that that is wrong, and so they, but those are the four bad ones. That but you get through them, you know, you can easily. So then we've got the the kind of the good things that sort of um, hold you hold you firm. And the first one I put at the top of the cross, if you like, is faith. And someone put something about faith really well the other day on Channeling Eric, a message from Mary, Jesus' mother, Jeshua's mother, if you like. It was quite believable. I think it might have been her. But she said about faith, um, that about the wise men who came, she said they were just like normal 
people or something, but were made kings. But this is coming through the medium, so it's all a bit. But the point was that they they didn't know what was going on, but they knew something was going on, and if you like, that faith is at the bridge of the gap. When you don't completely fully know something, but you know you get you get an idea that there's something going on, and it makes you want to find out. It makes you want to sort of act, if you like. So um, she didn't. Actually, she put it much better than that. I can't remember the exact words, but that's the that was the notion she was putting across. So that faith is is definitely, you know, so what the point is, like me, I sort of think, well, I should, you know, I'm claimed to be what I am, you know, I should know things for sure. But no, I'm not going to. It's just always going to be um, a bridge of faith required. Okay? So that faith. And at the bottom there, so honesty. So if you're not being honest, you know, it's going to break down, it's not going to work, you're not, your soul isn't going to sing. If you like these, maybe the sort of things that you need for your soul to be able to sing. And I've got joy and enthusiasm on the sides, but I'm not 100% sure about those, but they'll do for the moment. And, um, maybe that will develop or not, I don't know. So... That's that, but all's good. So play. Can't underest <laughs> play with your soul. Play, just play, just have that. If you had to have one word, but just a, a moral in life, just with one word, be God. <laughs> be play. Play, it's good. Um, Okay, that's it. I'll do. Go back.